Hi everybody, I'm Michael. I'm a landscape architect and environmentalist. And I'm here today with my client, Amy, who is also my favorite sister. Um, it's just not nice. <laughs> they're both my favorites. You're, they're both my favorites. Um, I'm in big trouble. So what we're gonna do is to help Amy, actually, with planting a desert rose that I gifted her many years ago and talk about the plant characteristics and help her install it in her yard. We will also go over how to control iguanas from terrorizing your garden and some steps you can take to protect your plants. So our video timeline will go like this. We're gonna present this to you in four segments. The first segment will focus on the desert rose plant characteristics, followed by plant care, then the install, and our last discussion will be on things you can do to control iguanas in your garden. So, you ready to dig in? Let's, Let's grow! Go. Okay, the desert rose, or as my sister likes to call it. It's a dusty rose. Yeah, no, that's a made up name. It's the, the common name is dusty rose. And it goes- Desert rose, <laughs> really? Did I say dusty? <laughs> She's messing me up, y'all. It's Desert Rose. That's the common name. And the botanical name is Adenium obesium. So this plant is native to Africa and then the Arabian Peninsula. Um, it is naturalized to grow here in South Florida. And speaking to its characteristics, it, um, it has these very, very thick, gnarly trunks. And we're going to be zooming in so you can see that. And they, they can actually form a beautiful bonsai in a container, but this puppy I got right out of school in 1988 and it's been growing in a container ever since. We had it in our Miami Shores, we had it in our Orlando home, we had it in our Miami Shores home, and then when we moved to a condo, it outgrew its space, so we, we gave it to Amy to, to take care of, and now it's outgrowing this container, so we feel it's time to put it put her in the ground. Um, and the, the, the more of the plant characteristics, she has these really thick, fleshy leaves. Um, and the branching habit, is this is normal for a desert rose. It has this very funky, loose branching habit. But, but being a succulent, this is a succulent, um, it will tend to hold a lot of water. So, so it doesn't need, it, it tends to hold a lot of water in the trunk. And that means you don't have to water it. And I'll, I'll go more into that in under plant care in a minute. Uh, it, is, it is a really, really cool tree and or shrub you know and many people can grow these um in containers um and you see most of them at the you know, big box nursery resellers they they have them in, in you know two two feet tall maybe at max but but this one here is just all of three and a half feet uh tall and wide and that is kind of the height that they do want to grow down here in south florida they can get a little bit taller they can grow from like three to nine feet let me talk about the plant flowers that's what these are known for they have spectacular flowers. This one's finicky, right? When do you normally see the flowers? Spring. Right. So these will have profuse pink and white flowers, but they come in a whole range of, of uh, different colors. And we'll put some some uh, PIP images up here of the flowering of, of the different types of varieties of the desert rose that you can, you can acquire for your home. Ours has a pink and white uh, flower. She's, she, she does this in a profuse burst of color in the spring, like Amy mentioned, that's around from April or March. She just picks her time, but what she'll do is she'll typically drop all her leaves before she does that, so it's even more striking. It's almost like, you know, cherry blossoms, you know, that when they when they don't have the leaves on them it, 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 up in D.C. and in Japan, they, they're very spectacular when they flower. On plant care, you want to put the desert rose in full sun. She loves full sun. And when we go into the install segment in a minute, we'll show you where that, that location is. You'll probably see it up to you right here. But uh, they want full sun. That would be the, the best ideal condition for them. Uh, they want to be planted in a soil that is sandy loamy, sandy loamy mix, which will be which will be very, very beneficial for them. Well drained, just as long as it's well drained. And they'd like to have when you're watering them, you can have it with your with watering like you normally have in the summer. Uh, where the summer rains come in there, but in the winter you want to throttle back that water. So if you have an automatic watering system, you may want to get those adjustable nozzles, and in the winter time throttle that back. They really don't need a lot of water. Uh, speaking to to uh, pests, this 
plant, unfortunately, is prone to getting mealybugs, aphids, and uh, spider mites. <laughs> and there's actually some spider mites over here that we have to take care of that I can actually see uh, on her poor plant. That is, that is something you do need to address um, and be aware of, uh, as well as what? Iguanas. Iguanas. Oh and goodness. so um, we're going to speak. A, yes, we're going to speak a little bit about iguanas too. Amy's overrun with them, as many of you in South Florida are, and I'm, get, I'm getting a lot of comments on our channel. Oh, and if you find value in this video, please consider subscribing uh, to our channel because we're posting videos like like this weekly to help you, South Florida gardener. Um, but iguanas do love the flowers on this plant and the leaves. Uh -huh. And the leaves. So they tend, but actually, you know, from the University of uh, Florida IFAS, they tend to not like super succulent leaves. These must not be thick enough. Amy has a beautiful Hoya growing in the shade over here, and they're not even bothering that. And they have, as you know, those house plants or, or, or uh, tropical plants um, have very thick, fleshy leaves. And so we want to tend not to like those. And I'll give you a list in the care instructions of the later part of what plants um, Iguanas tend not to like. They tend to like a lot. They love hibiscus flowers. They love the, the desert rose. They love her ground orchids, but she's been successful so far in, in scattering them. Um, you can, um, and, and now speaking to the pest of iguanas, you can euthanize them. It is legal here in South Florida. As long as it's done humanely, that can be by means of, of stunning them and uh, decapitation. Or you can you can do there's other other means you can do you can also call a company to help uh, trap them and then and then euthanize them in a, in a humane way but it is it is legal to do that um, uh, dogs um, having a pet will will chase them out of your yard somewhat but you, you, they do they do tend to come back um, uh, IFAS has mentioned in their documentation that they are also attracted to to orchid flowers that will eat them but our, her neighbor has several gland band is in full bloom right now, easily accessible by, by uh, the iguanas, and Amy's not noticing that. So maybe there are certain types of, of, of orchids that they are not attracted to. So that could be something that you could have in your plant palette for your yard. Uh, milkweed is another plant, which is a great monarch uh, butterfly attractive, and Iphis has mentioned that they are not so prone to attack that plant. So I'll go into, a, in, the, in the written care instructions, like I mentioned earlier, uh, in more detail on what to do, what you can do with, with, with that pest of uh, the iguana. And we are also going to clad, we're actually going to create a little barrier of uh, sheet metal um, at the base of her, uh, of, the, of the desert rose when we plant her to keep the iguanas from climbing up and getting onto the trunk. So hopefully that, that will deter them and, and she's not going to have a problem and this tree's going to be able to take off even more because this is, she's getting there. She's, I mean, God, I mean, this is over 30 years I've had her in a container of various sizes. And we're just, I'm just very happy that I get to, to uh, uh, with Amy, plant, these, plant this in her yard and have her, have her take, on, take on roots over here in uh, her area near the pool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch over to the install segment. And then we'll circle back after the, the care instructions and do a summary at the end. All right, let's go on to the next step. Okay, now we're gonna move the desert rose, or as Amy likes to call it. Dusty rose. To her location over here where the shovels are. And I need all hands on deck. We got my beautiful niece, Rachel, over here, and Stephanie. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's get moving. Let's grow. Let's grow. Don't push me in the pool, Rachel. Okay. So we're just gonna uh, take her out of the pot. We're gonna we're gonna run through this a little bit quicker video, like we've done some of our others, so we don't bore you um, with that. But you're going to see the process that we go through. Most important thing about when you're putting a plant in the ground is that you don't want to set it too deep. You want to put wherever the base of the top of the plant is growing out of the soil in the container. That's where it's going to meet in the existing grade that it's going into. You don't want to sink your plant too low. That can cause a big problem. Um, and so we're going to get on to that right now. When you're preparing your hole here, you want to make sure that you dig the hole a little bit wider than the container that it's in. And you also, with the desert rose, want to make sure that you're planting it in a sandy 
soil location. Here you can see my sister's soil is very sandy. There's, a, there's these light colored uh, soil chunks that you can see is pulling up. That's sand and that's really good. But we're still going to, going to amend the planting hole with some perlite and some potting mix, but heavy on the perlite, which is a which helps with aeration and with with drainage, so that the desert rose grows in a in a very well drained uh, soil environment. And once you have the depth of your hole uh, reached, you want to tamp the soil, make it level as best you can. You can see me doing that here. And then you want to confirm your dimensions to make sure that you don't have your plant put in the hole too deep. Like I mentioned earlier, it's very important to have your plant installed at the grade it's grown in the pot or a little bit higher than the grade it's going in. You don't want to create any uh, potential for rot. Well, now we're going to go to intermission because we obviously have a rainstorm developing right on top of us just after we dug the hole. All right, be right back. And we got started again, and another rainstorm. Ah, so frustrating. So this, this is our trunk of this beastly, dusty rose, as your mom likes to call it, the desert rose. And you can see some cavities developed where some of the trunk had, had rotted out, but it healed over. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is go around with this hand, hand trowel and uh, hit the shovel and kind of loosen the edge where we can of the soil going up against the edge of the container. So it's pretty loose here. We don't know what it's going to be like down at the bottom because it's been in this. Thank you, Rachel. It's been in this pot for a while. We have a lot of a lot of weeds that are in here, and it's very important to get these out. And Stephanie did a great job of pulling a ton of these out, but. We're going to continue to do that so we don't whoops so we don't spread them into the garden later all right so what we're going to do now is uh, if stephanie and rachel can get on the other side we're going to tip it over and i'm going to pull out this this beast this beautiful beast oh everybody while we're up here can you see this this is called lichen that has a, it's a it's a fungus that grows on the trunk uh very common for for mature desert roses to have it. It's a symbiotic relationship. It doesn't cause any harm to the plant. And you can also see, look at this cute little air plant. Oh my God, Diego, she's been on this plant for years. And it's it's an epiphyte, it's gonna do no harm. She's just hanging there, chilling out, having a good time. But so this is totally natural for, for a desert rose to have this mottled appearance. All right, let's get to, let's get to work, okay. Over here, uh, Rach, if you didn't step on the other side, we're going to tip it towards me. Okay. Oh, boy. All right. And down it is. All right. Now I'm squished. All right. So now <laughs> what you guys are going to do is, Diego, if you could film from behind me on this side, I'm going to pull towards you so you can see what we have root ball wise. What do I have to do? Oh, just hold it like you're doing. Whoa! Now you're strong. Thank you. Okay. All right, now, if you could rotate around and look at the roots from over here, Diego. So, our baby here did not get root bound that I thought she would, being in this container for so long. She has roots all the way down to the to the bottom, but they're not circling. So that's a very good sign, you all. I'm gonna loosen some of this, and we just had a big rainstorm, so it's kind of wet. And see, see how the rest of the roots doing really well. Yeah, so what we're gonna do now is just transfer her over to the container, and I'm gonna need everybody's help. So let's set up for that. What you can see here is that we're rotating the plant a little bit so that we can Put the best facing branching structure of the plant out towards the pool side and here we are set in the hole it's level with the grade which is very important and now we just need to backfill the hole with the improved potting soil Michael you need to move it over about I don't know three inches no you're gonna like your yard you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna like it right here oh 
Like pine or the we're gonna do both. We're gonna do perlite and potting soil. We're gonna mix it together. So we need that little bucket. So let's grab that bucket and do a mix, and we'll we'll uh, zoom in and show you that. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little thing, a little different because this is a desert rose, and we have our traditional potting mix that you may have seen in our videos. But in here, we're gonna do a 50-50. We're gonna do 50% perlite that Rachel's gonna fill up. So we're only gonna do um, a quarter, a quarter of the bucket right now, Rachel. So pour, pour that into about where my finger is. All right, now pull out. And now Stephanie, take your shovel and do the same, same thickness. See where my finger is? Yep, go up to about here, to about halfway. And then Stephanie's gonna do washing machine in a minute washing machine is what what's that what's washing machine uncle mike washing machine is how you mix it all together in the wash potting soil mix wash okay steph that's good now take your shovel steph go in here stir that stuff up like a washing machine get them get them all mixed together so you see a lot of the white and the brown together there you go dig down deep to the bottom i'll help move the washing machine around some for you a little bit of the washing machine is going Look at all that. What? How's that look? Looks pretty good, right? All right. Let's just rinse and repeat. So now, Rach, another quarter of the perlite. Good job. All right, Rach. Stephanie, I'm sorry. Don't confuse us now. I know. Well, I couldn't even say Desert Rose earlier. Well, you got confused. I do that easily, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Rach, could you help her by ripping the bag open more? Mm -hmm. Thanks. There you go. And Rach, one more step. Okay, now let's do this. And now let's do washing machine. Stick it in there, take it around. Go to town, pull up the low in the top. Yeah, you gotta bounce it around too. Washing oh, machine. Careful. I'm getting some out. There you go. All right. Let me see it from the side, from my side. So I know you're left-handed. It's hard on that side. All right. This is really good. It's heavily mixed in with perlite, which helps with drainage since this is a succulent. So this is very much like a, a cactus, a heavy-duty cactus mix. Potting soil I had was already like that. They have a lot of sandy soil here in their yard, which is great you can see here so that's great for this plant you can also see it over there the white but this plant likes likes it really dry so even in this hole that we have I'm gonna ask Rachel to do us a favor before we put some in some proof soil I want her to grab the perlite and if you could just fill in around the edge of that near the base of the roots Rach just about just about an inch at the base just to give give the base of the roots um, just some perlite in there you can go a little thicker than that. Yeah, and I'll just go around the plant all the way around. Yes, perfect. Yep, keep going, keep going. There you go. Over here. My sister has really good really good loamy soil here it was very easy for us to dig so it drains well but we just want to make sure that this one has everything this could this could play this could be in place of lava rock some people use lava rock too to mix in there like um for for plant succulents that like well-drained soil and now i'm going to ask my nieces to fill in fill in the voids there with the potting mix rachel will do the back and then stephanie will do the front and then we'll water it in and then we'll, we'll uh, mix it with some existing soil as well, because plants have to get used to the area they're growing in. So we're gonna do some of that improved soil here. You don't have to go all the way up to the top, Rach, because we're gonna add some, some existing soil. So just do a couple inches around her side. She'll pass it to you in a minute, Steph. She's gonna go all the way around by her right shoe and keep going around towards me. And then I'll pass it to you, Steph, over here. There you go, perfect. Thank you. Now, if you could take a few handfuls, Rachel, let me get this part, Steph, of the existing soil and just sort of add another two, two inches of soil on top of that soil. Yeah, bingo. 
that's mixing the improved soil with the existing soil. And it's a good tactic to use when you are planting here in South Florida. Oh, sorry, Steph, I did a lot of your part. You could add some more in here for me. Just start from here over. There you go, Rach, that's good. Now what I'm gonna do is, Stephanie, if you could take the shovel now, and I'll show you what I'm doing. See what I'm doing like this? Can you do that just in that area, up and down? That's gonna kind of push it down to the end, get, any, get rid of any of those voids, those air pockets. We'll hose this in with some water, we'll water this in with a hose, and that'll help. But see how this is all drifting down? Because I'm breaking through some of that loose soil. So, Rach, if you could do this now with yours, with the shovel, mm -hmm. and kind of push down in there. Um, Stephanie, if you could start putting that existing soil in. Perfect. Excellent job. I'll do the same on my part. Mine's easier. I can just backfill like this. All right, now what we're going to do is come back with the improved soil on the top and we're going to bring it back. Rachel, Stephanie, let's start with you. And let's push our hands like this to get this down and see how it, see how this really, really starts to allow, allow for more soil to get in there. That's getting rid of voids. So you could use your hand or the shovel and just put some more of that improved soil there to, up to the top of where those, where this root, where this con uh, the container grown sort of was. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to do it the lazy way. And to you, Miss Rachel, Rachel and I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to just backfill some of the existing soil we had before. I'm actually yes. doing a combination. Okay, that's fine. Don't have to be super, super exact. But this is a great way of putting in a lot of well-drained, well-drained soil. Yeah, as long as it doesn't go higher than than what's in the pot right there. I was tamping it down to even get more air pockets out. And over there, I found another air pocket, so we'll put some more soil back in there around the back, and then we'll water it in. Okay, let's go do that soil with water to help get rid of any leftover voids the air pockets. All right. Okay, now let your sister have fun. This is one of my favorite parts. Rachel. Rachel's turn. What am I doing? Just, 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 go around the base. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, and then bring it over and just do like a square like we did. Yeah, right where we put all that soil. Bingo. And then just come around and then do it again a few times just keep going around we're just pushing that water down in there which is great nice away from the root bingo okay perfect yes okay so are we done we'll with this? Move, move it out, and what we're going to do is I'm going to take it now and do this final part here. Did you look down here, Diego? You obviously made a mess. Can you turn the water up higher for me, yeah. Rachel, please? We're going to get rid of all this dirt on my sister's patio so it doesn't get in her pool. And if it gets in her pool, I'm going to get grounded. Right, Stephanie? I'm going to get grounded by your mom. Now we're just going to be putting in some mulch a few inches in from the trunk. Just lightly, Steph. Yeah, just... Yeah, there you go. Um, but we're not going to fill in the mulch of the entire area because we're going to be putting the sheet metal in here and I want to be able to sink it in the dirt a little bit. So we're just going to be putting in some of the mulch around the trunk so we can get to doing the other part of this project. And then just circle around and then move on to the next step. To control the iguanas in her yard, we've got a roll of sheet metal 24 inches tall and we're going to create a a planter, a faux planter in her garden space, and though that sheet metal is going to keep the, the uh, iguanas from climbing up and getting into the plant because the metal has this gloss-like finish. Here you can see us after we've cut it, we've done like a 30 inch diameter planter, we're now using an awl to pierce some holes so we can put some zip strips on it, which will hold the two pieces of the sheet metal together.
it's not the ideal solution. The ideal solution would be that there's no iguanas, but it is what it is. And we'll be coming back later and adding some more ground covers to the base of the planter so that it kind of disappears in the yard. You've got to be careful you don't put any tall plants next to this uh, sheet metal planter because the, the iguanas will climb on top of that and use that as a, as a step stool to get to the plant. Here you can see us preparing the trench around the desert rows uh, from which we'll set the sheet metal and create the faux planter. All right, here's the planter. We secured it with the zip strips at the back side towards the fence. And now we're just adding the rest of the mulch to the front of the planter. Here you can see it's all done. We have the desert rose installed and the faux planter. As to other things you can do to control iguanas from overtaking your yard, you can look to, to filling up any holes that they've dug, uh, any tunnels that they've created, that is. Uh, and also if you have fruiting trees to take the fruit out as soon as it's ripe because iguanas are uh, crazy for mangoes and bananas and other fruiting uh, trees. You may also want to consider there's some anecdotal evidence that old CD discs, any bright shining lights, may deter some iguanas, as well as a, a faux owl that you can buy at some of the uh, big box retailers. Uh, owls and hawks and stuff are predators for the juvenile iguanas, so that may help keep them out of your yard as well. And another thing you could consider adding to your yard is some citrus plants. Iguanas do not eat citrus. And in the following written care instructions, I'll go more into detail on some of the other plants iguanas are not so keen on, uh, as well as ones that they really, really do like to attack. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Amy, for having us over here. I should be thanking you. I did all the work. Yeah. All right, you have to pay up. Pay yeah. up. Pay up. <laughs> That's my family. It's I can't. I get to get a simple kiss. He loves it. Uh -huh. So please, if you have any questions, please just leave them in the comment box below. We hope you like what we've done here. It does kind of look like a planter. Tell them what happened when we went inside to change and shower, like literally happened. He was changing. I came out and this massive iguana body this big was trying to climb up the white thing to get in the tree and it couldn't. Of so, course I chased them off. But. We're not, it's, it's not a guarantee, um, but it is, you know, at least it's, a, at least it's a, an attempt to, to control. And um, as you saw from the, from the written care instructions, there's, there's certain things you can do to help control the iguanas that, that may be uh, uh, eating up your plants in your yard. So again, so again, I'm Michael. Until next time, bye. I'm, I'm for iguanas. <laughs> uh, I almost forgot I wanted to thank my nieces, Rachel and Stephanie for helping, unlike their mother who was <laughs> sipping martinis with my sister, <laughs> sipping those Cosmos in the background. So again, until next time, bye. Bye. Denium of Boosum. <laughs> okay. You just made that up. I said it wrong. Every five minutes of play? What happened? Your hair got caught? Yeah. <laughs> You're free. Bad desert run.
Trust me. I, oh, shit. Okay. We got it. This is just a few takes. We get better and better. Okay, we can do that. Is it still filming? Yep. Oh, these are great outtakes. If you found value in this video, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. We post weekly. Thanks.